we will need the IP address of the VM and its application, so within the CLI of Metasploitable, just run an ifconfig command to show the IP and take a note of this. We can now go to the browser within the Kali Linux machine and type in that IP. Mine is 192.168.1.134. The Metasploitable application appears and you can see a lot of other applications. For SQL injection, we are going to be using the Mutility application, so click on the link to fire it up. If you navigate to the OWASP Top 10, A1 Injection, Extract Data, User Info page, this is where you will need to be a little later on. Now we are going to start up Burp Suite to begin our session of pen testing on the Mutility app. I have used Burp recently, but if this is the first time you have used it, just type Burp into the search bar and it will appear as Community Edition. It will take a little time to start up, but eventually a box will appear with the temporary project in memory. Just click Next. We are using the Burp defaults, so just click Start Burp to begin. We must turn on the actual proxy server service within Burp Suite now, so it can capture the packets as they pass through. If you head to Proxy Settings and then click on the existing Proxy Server Settings, click Remove. We are now going to add in the new Proxy Server, which is the same loopback IP address of 127.0.0.1, but this time the port number is port 80. With that done, we head over to Firefox to mirror those settings, so that the browser traffic is going to pass through the proxy. Click on Settings and once you are on here, just scroll all the way down to Network Settings. Within the settings, you will see a settings button. Click this to see the current proxy and it will say no proxy. We are going to configure the proxy manually so that it mirrors the burp suite configuration. To begin intercepting the traffic from utility, we need to activate the intercept is on button and it will turn to blue. Returning to Mutility, we will visit the OWASP Top 10 SQL page, so if you just follow the menu I have clicked, it will try to access that page. But it will not move any further until click on the forward button on Burp, as this will then allow each packet to pass through the proxy for inspection. If you type in username and password in both boxes and hit forward, you will see that attempt in Burp. It shows the username and password. What we need to do now is take the username field and use it as an intruder. Click send to intruder. Now on the intruder tab, you can see there are delimiters already around the username field. You can clear and replace it again, so as you can get into a useful habit for the future. With that done, we are now going to configure the payload to send along to the server with various SQL injection values. Click the load button and when the box pops up, we are going to look for the file called sql.txt. You will need to locate this and as shown, mine is in the user share w fuzz folder, but this may vary between different dist rows. It's populated with all the SQL injection strings to be fired at the Mutility application. With setup now done, all we have to do now is start the attack on the Metasploitable server. This takes a little while during this simulation, so you will need to be a bit patient, time for a sip of that two-hour-old coffee. I have sped it up and we have reached the end of the attack. It was status code 200 for all the attacks, but that is because a page appeared during each brute force login attempt. It does not mean a successful attack. At this point, we need to interpret what is happening with these results. One way to spot an anomaly is by the length field. We are looking for a large number for the number of bytes in the response packet. Also, to see the response page, click on the render tab. This will show the graphical version of HTML. I have clicked on the packet with 23,591 bytes and it shows no useful information in the render tab. I have scrolled down to a packet with 24387 bytes in, suggesting more information as it is larger than the last one. Scrolling down, it does start to show some of the account usernames and passwords. However, I am looking for a larger packet size in bytes. Eventually, I find one at request 39. As we scroll down the render tab, OMG, we can see all of the usernames and passwords for this application. 
good practice would be to take all of the accounts and save them somewhere for later testing. I am going to use one of the accounts shortly, the one for John with the password of monkey. Before I can test the account details, I am going to turn the proxy intercept off, as I do not need to inspect any further packets. With the John account, I can just test logging into this account. Knowing the username John and password as monkey, I can access the account with no issues as shown. At the top of the page, it shows me logged in as the user John and I like the smell of confunk. Say what now? Thank you so much for watching today's SQL injection video using Burp Suite at the G-Man channel. Like, share and subscribe to our channel and we will see you again soon for more useful content.